Put your boots on, friend. Let's go milk the cows. Chickens. You waiting for Hamish to spread you some scratch? A oh, few sheds wide open, of course. Good morning, cows. Milk time. Come on in. Milk time. Milk time. It is the shortest day of the year here in Northern British Columbia, Canada. The sun is not up yet, it's about 8.30. I was kinda late to milking. It was a rough start with the moods in our house. Today I thought I'd show you what I feed the cows. I'm not a feed expert. Every cow's nutritional needs are different based on what they're producing and all sorts of things, but this is what has worked for us. It's basically the same as what we did last year, just with one tweak. And it's working well for the cows. So I thought I would show you. That first bucket that I did of warm water is for beet pulp. So beet pulp is a carb. And it, whoa, tripped on that. Let's see which one's beet pulp here. It's alfalfa. It's a product of um, sugar beet production. It's not like my most ideal favorite thing, but it's a really good card for putting weight on cows and moss you needed to put weight on. It expands like crazy. So you must soak it before you feed it, otherwise it can expand in their throat or just even in their stomach and give them a tummy ache. So I feed about two or three quarts worth, so then I soak it. So it goes straight into the water. I'll just dump it in out of the bag. I feed an approximate amount between the two cows. They get fed together. This is a three gallon bucket and you can see you can't even barely see it there below the water, but just you wait. I always get this going before milking and the rest of it I do after milking. So just you wait. On average, five pounds of feed. It, sorry, five, yeah, a gallon of feed is five pounds. So two to three quarts is feeding them about three pounds. We don't feed grain during milking. Milk grain is an after milking treat. And if you're noticing that you're having troubles with behavior in cows during milking, maybe try switching to not, your halter's all funny. Try switching to feeding them after milking. It takes a few days of training, but it's worth it. I put buckets up here, so when I'm brushing cows and the hair is blowing that way, they don't get hair in the bucket. Ready for milk time, Mossy? You know you are. So Jessa's calf here has to stay separate from her, and Jessa gets milked second. Um, we milk herd boss first. So she stays closed back there, and the calf, I actually, come on calf, come on around here. The calf normally runs in after Mossy. And then I lock her up separately. My MacGyvered setup here is that, cause I don't have to close this when the cows are in here, cause I have her closed out of here anyways. I lock the calf in this little area just to keep it out of the way. So when I'm moving Mossy out and Jessa back in and such, I'm not juggling cows. The cows do have silage, which sometimes they eat, sometimes they don't. Mossy's been so good recently, a few times I forgot to even close this and she doesn't even move. So, oh, some hay, but not too dirty this morning, Mossy. It's been flirting with kind of just above freezing and it makes for muddy milking.
she looks dirtier than she is just because of her dark hair. And sometimes the dirt in winter or whenever just stains her udder. So I always give every teeth a quick wipe just to get any dirt softening. And then go back and start scrubbing them. I have more in-depth videos on how and why I do all this. Mossy is done and she doesn't get grain in here anymore. They both get grain together. Come on, Mossy. How'd she get? Come on. Come on. Come on. How'd she get? How'd she get? Come on, cow. You ready, Jessa? Jessa takes some coercion to get into the stanchion. <laughs> Let's just say that. Come on, girl. Come on. It's the first day of winter, Freya. Sure is. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you actually gonna just walk in? That would be something I doubt it. Hey Mossy, why don't you get out of here? Come on out of here. Close. Beef cow broke this gate, but the cow milk cows don't try and get through it. Come on, girl. Come on. Even if the calf isn't there, she's still takes her sweet time. <laughs> Come on. I usually end up, I just walk through here because I can still fit. Shaking a bucket. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Come on, cow. You got some eggs, Ham? How many? Three lovely eggs. Can I see them? I love how all the eggs are kind of different colors. This one's really cool color. Mm-hmm. Have you fed them scratch yet? No, not yet. Just Come on, Jessa. Today is taking longer than normal for Jessa. Normally we're under a minute. Come on. Come on, Jessa. Come on. You're gonna make it difficult for me this morning, cow thing is about Jessa, you can't make her. You can't push her, you can't, you know, smack her, rump her, 
any of that stuff, it doesn't work. She has to decide she wants to do it. And I try to keep it positive. <laughs> Come on, cow. Can you get? Come on, look, girl. Hey. But, I mean, she's only less than three weeks into milking. Hey, hey, no. Don't drink the wash water. That tastes yuck. Yuck. See? <laughs> Yucky soap. Just think of her as a toddler. Like a naughty toddler? No. And you'll basically know what it's like to work with a heifer. Toddler who doesn't want to get their pants on or doesn't want to go in their car seat. Nothing you can do can make them. The other thing with cows is like sometimes you can like pull their tail and it'll make them move forward. Jessa runs backwards if you try that. Good girl, Jessa. Good girl. Good girl. I think she's in and she's fine. Just getting in. How's it going? Another morning, yes. Jessa still uses a kick bar because, well, it just makes her behave a little better. is nice and clean this morning. It's a nice thing about a tiny heifer udder. Less surface area to get dirty. I forgot to bring my dry cloths out, so my secondary cloth, which is the much cleaner one, I'm just rinsing it out real good and squeezing it out real good and kind of using it as my dry cloth. Okay, just a girl. milk Jessa into a really tall bucket because um, when she moves her feet around I'm at less it like she'd have to move her foot really high to risk compromising the milk bucket and actually tipping it over versus when I was using a smaller bucket like this one it doesn't take much for her to get the edge of it so this way when she's shifting her feet around um, she just will knock the bucket like this if she does knock it there's a very low chance of her actually knocking it over. Now that I say that, it's probably gonna happen. So I always just kind of start with one, see what sort of mood she's in. I haven't been milking the back teeth a whole lot. I've mostly been leaving that for the calf. But I also just start with one because then it, she always moves around a bit to start off with. So then I can see kind of where she's gonna move around before I get settled into milking. Nope, leave it down. First 
first bit is always the worst, and then she settles in. My hand's cold now, I don't want to stick that on her teeth. Ooh, yeah, you felt that cold hand. You're fine, good girl, stand still. higher her udder is compared to Mossy. Her back teeth is the one that if it's gonna give me trouble, if she's gonna give me troubles, it's gonna be over the back teeth. And the back teeth is the smallest and hardest to milk. So I'm milking enough that she gets just stays used to me milking it but mostly I just leave it for the calf to drink in hopes that the calf bunting around and sucking on it lots will number one desensitize her to that being milked and number two stretch that tea out of it. I only get about a gallon from Jessa and it takes me about 15 minutes same length of time it takes me to get three gallons from Mossy. A few days ago I somewhat gave up, so to speak, on milking that back teat because it just would take me so long in these tiny little squirts to get any amount of milk and it just wasn't worth it. I didn't need the milk. I'm happy for the calf to drink it. As you can hear, this is the short squirt I get from the back one and that's how much I can get from the front. Now we take the kick bar off. Let Jessa out. Come on, girl. How much you get? No, we already tried drinking that, remember? It wasn't yummy. Now I let the calf out so she can have her breakfast. She stays together then all day. She knows the drill. She's excited. Okay. Jessa, move out of the way. Okay, now I'm gonna get their grain. The nice thing about winter is I can just leave the milk outside and um, do the other things I need to do and it's not getting warmer yet. Our dog and our main cats who like to hang around us have all been trained to stay away from the milk buckets. For breakfast, we buy, the cows get um, three scoops. This is about a one gallon scoop, which is about four to five pounds of this local mix and this local caster. It's great. So, do to do. This one is 49% barley, 13% wheat, 33% peas. 38% piece. Interesting. Last time it was lower barley, higher wheat. I must have requested the wrong one. This is what she looks like. They get two scoops at night of this. And then we have a small handful of loose minerals. I started mixing it in with their feed at the suggestion of a family cow person I really admire. Big fat handful of baking soda. This is bought by the 25 pound bag at the feed store. Helps with their room and pH. Also, look how much this beet pulp 
has now expanded four or five times its size plus a gallon of alfalfa pellets um, they can eat pellets or cubes pellets are cheaper so I feed them so now I go dump this in the trough kind of try and spread it out so they both get all of it I realized I hadn't let Jessa out of here yet oh she just knocked my arm need to do that so she can get in that's where we feed them in that trough so, and she knows it's coming used to be a hay manger for sheep from the previous owners and I can tell by that plug the lights not on the water heater got unplugged for some reason and the water's frozen so better go see why that plug is not working I'm gonna guess this right here it's just unplugged enough I need to two hands First four loads. Monster loads. Is there anything in the washing machine? I didn't check. Can you check and see if you need to move it to the dryer? Okay, you get out of here. Hey, Dad. Hi, Rowan. Your kitty's down here. Part of me, Mac? My camera is not so sure what to think <sighs> of being outside and then inside. Still not quite. No. Okay, Jessup. So what I do is I strain Jessup into a smaller bucket. And then I wash this bucket so I can strain Mossy's milk into this. Uh, what's that? What are you eating? A cold carrot? Delicious. Sometimes I mix the milk together, but mostly I've been wanting to monitor how Jess is letting down for us which is, you know, how the cream line is. So I do hers separate, because I just want to keep an eye on that, make sure she's still letting down well for us. Because if she decides to not let down well for us, then I may end up pulling the calf, because mama doesn't go to all this effort for skim milk. Oh, who tightened this jar? Uh, roller. Oh, back off for the milk. I'm never not able to eat, so there, now it opens. Always smell the jar. Always smell the jar. I the jar. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like that? Milk. <laughs> Jess has given just over a gallon, so I will put that last bit in with Mossy's milk. <laughs> because Mossy's giving over three gallons, so I'm not gonna put them in tiny little jars on their own. I just combine them. I like jars, kid. Jars? Yeah. Oh! That one smells a little pickly. Bark. Leave it, please, Rowan. I don't like jars. Well, it doesn't smell bad. Just needs a little bit. I'm a dozer. Go on. Do you want to hold the lid for me? Oh, actually, you're dirty. Never mind. You look like you have peanut butter on you. Who fed you peanut butter and didn't wash you up? I did. Yeah. Dozer. Okay, we need another jar, Rowan. <laughs> it may sound redundant, but I smell every jar. You just never know. Yeah. Rowan, what are you doing? They didn't produce much over their amounts, but that's fine. Oh, where's my pen? 
Okay. What's the date? 21st. And just as I write J21. I can hear Mary is talking on the phone upstairs. It's a very unusual sound in our house. That man avoids phones. Talking on the phone at all costs. Now, more dishes. One thing you may not realize with Family Cow there's a lot of dishes and laundry. You could use paper towel to wash their udder, but I just think it doesn't do as good a job. I don't get the like scrubbiness. I much prefer to use rags. So we go through six rags every morning just milking the two cows. And yeah, plus all the dishes. Go find Dada. He's gonna wash your hands. You found a bubble wand? Say bye-bye. Bye, Joe. Bye-bye.